Hey everybody, this is Tim Sharone, and welcome to my brand new podcast called The Sharone Zone. Blah, 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 blah. And welcome to The Sharone Zone. We are here with my good friend and bass player on my last record, Mr. Luis Espiat. Hey, hey. I got it right? Man, you sounded great, man. You said it even with the gu- the gusto, as they say. You ah, know, really good. muchas gracias, mi amigo. <laughs> sí, sí. <laughs> Trabajando en mi español. Bueno, muy bueno con el español. Oh, muy bueno. Gracias, gracias. Um, <laughs> so, um, you're a professional bass player out of mm-hmm. Nashville. So let everybody know what, you know, what you've been doing and who you who you've been working for that kind of stuff yeah uh well that's uh you know it's it's men, mainly like a lot of uh working musicians especially out of nashville uh throughout my career i've worked in different facets of uh from being in a band signed to a record label to being a hired gun to being a studio musician and doing sometimes all of that all at the same time mm-hmm. uh it's just kind of the nature of the beast especially nowadays but as of late, uh, I've been doing live work with Trace Atkins, uh, country superstar Trace Atkins there. Yes, sir. Uh, and I'm actually on the road with him right now as we speak. I'm in a hotel room in Cleveland, Ohio uh, on a day off. We're working our way across uh, for uh, another week or so, doing a few shows before we head back to Nashville. And um, outside of Trace in the live realm, I do a few live shows with uh, Chris Carmack, who is uh, one of the stars of the TV show Nashville. Who, okay. uh, they just they just wrapped their show uh, recently, and uh, he plays the character of Will Lexington on the show. Okay. Um, outside of that, as far as the live work goes, I do some in town stuff as well, some charity stuff, um, benefit shows. Mm-hmm. But those are always a lot of fun. Um, and then studio work, uh, yeah. just play on a variety of records. Um, obviously, the majority of it, it tends to be in the contemporary country uh realm but i just did a fusion record not too long ago for an artist um did a a bunch of pop records for some pop artists so it's just kind of being in uh nashville tennessee it's great because it really is music city usa um country music has made it what it is but now it's very much more broad based of yes country music is still the main stalwart but we have everything else under the sun you can imagine and the resources, facilities, and talent pool to make it happen, which is great, and it's uh, it's great to be part of that. So yeah. that's as of late. Um, prior to that, uh, I was in a couple rock bands. I was in a rock band called Hot Action Cops, signed to Atlantic Records about 15 years ago, and we had you know moderate a moderate hit here in the states, and uh, which went top 10 overseas in a few countries. Had some placement in movies and TV, which was a, a great experience. That was my first time doing something of that. Um, at that level, mm-hmm. so I, I learned a lot and had a great time doing it, and uh, and subsequently, just after that, just started being more the side guy, really. Yeah. Um, but I still would do, you know, band member stuff or whatever. Um, and as of lately, as a matter of fact, I have a side project called Dixie Horsepower, uh, oh, cool. which is a rock band with uh, with Troy Lacetta from Tesla on drums. Oh, uh, I, everybody loves yeah. Troy. Yeah, Troy's yeah, Troy's yeah. great. Everybody, yeah. And everybody says that too. Anybody that knows Troy or even doesn't know him that well, but they get to meet him, they're like, "Oh, we love Troy. He's such a sweetheart. He's he like really a, is." Yeah, he's like a little te- like a little teddy bear. <laughs> <laughs> he's a rock. And, he's a rock and roll teddy bear. Yes, uh, yes. I think. But he's the kind. I think he got of, a new nickname. Yeah, exactly. Now he knows. Yep. But he's the kind of guy. It's like it, it, it's funny because uh, to speak of him, his personality is what you see is what you get, which is great because people think, oh, it, he's being nice because he has to. He's a public figure or whatever. It's like no, no, he really is. That's that's him. Yeah, yeah. You definitely. know, that's that's kind of the same way working with uh, with Trace Atkins. You know, Trace is uh, has a very uh, brutally honest delivery on things. Yeah. But. That's him, and that's part of the, which is the beautiful thing about it. You know, he, he's a nice guy, but, you know, he's kind of like, well, this is what I think, and there it is. Yeah. You know, take it for what it is. I, I could only imagine Trace Adkins as, as your boss. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, it's, no, he's, he's, a, he's actually a really good boss. Um, yeah. You know, his, uh, as far as working from the musical standpoint, his, um, what he wants is just, you know, the best musicians. He wants the music to be translated as best as possible. So mm-hmm. he's not really hung up on anything else. It's just more like, 
I just want this to be the best it can be. Mm-hmm. But uh, but it's great. We have a good time on the road. You know, he treats us really well. We'll, we'll go golfing. He takes nice. us golfing. Nice. So, you know, that kind of thing and amongst other things. So it's a good time. Yeah, I think that's – all of those things are very interesting. Um, I think from from a musician – a musician standpoint and of course you know people that want to be doing what you're doing also from my standpoint as a recording artist i love to hear about and watch how other people run their business other artists run their business how they treat people how they treat um, how they treat their band members and mm-hmm. um you know i i i tend to be very very strong willed with mm-hmm. things sure. you know um but hopefully i i'm 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 doing kind of the same thing as i can imagine that trace just knows what he wants and he's yep. gonna get what he wants and then everything else is gonna be fun and cool and easy business so exactly yeah yeah and that's definitely the way it is with him and that's uh you know having had his you know his career being 20 some nine years in the business and had any hits for a long time he's grown to that point where it's he knows exactly what he wants and he's how to get it yeah. you know he's, he's just he's one of those guys that you know anybody who's done it as long as he has will get to that point well i mean what a what a huge compliment um it says a lot about you obviously he can hire anyone to play with him and mm. so maybe you can talk a little bit about um some of the, I, I guess you would call the soft skills, you know, of, of, of course, in Nashville, there are a million amazing musicians. And mm-hmm. there are, it, being a band leader and hiring tons of different musicians, because I'm always hiring different people um, all mm-hmm. over the country, I deal with this a lot. But maybe you can talk a little bit about um, the skills outside of, of just playing music. Oh yes, absolutely. And that's one of those things that, uh, uh, I use the example of going to, uh, college for music, yep. uh, which I did. I went to Berkeley college of music and, uh, you know, if you go to study music, that's great. Uh, and it teaches you those important skill sets of actually executing the music the way it should be the skills that you talk about are the things that you learn as you go. So it's kind of like the same thing if you do any other job and you take an apprenticeship or an internship, the reason those things exist is so you learn those skills that you don't learn in the classroom necessarily because they're very almost intangible. You can't really, you could sort of say, and we can talk about it, and I, we will, but to teach it, to say, okay, you know, explain, well, you have to be a good human being. <laughs> well, how, how does that translate? Yeah. You know, how does that... How does good etiquette translate? And it's everything almost else. like the like the space between the notes. Yes, very where, much so. You know, like where the notes are is the formal teaching and training and learning, but there are the things in between that um, would be hard to teach. Very much so. Well, that's a great analogy, I think, because the space between the notes is as important as the notes themselves. They're just a different animal, but they need to be there. So the uh, these other skills that you talk about, um, which when you say them almost sound very common sense like, mm-hmm. but Cliché-ish. when you put in a, yeah, exactly. There you go. Yeah, but it's uh, it's one of those things where you need to develop and practice and hone a skill and mm-hmm. not realize like, yeah, I, I feel as I'm a good person, but how does that translate into working in a work environment with other musicians, uh, an artist, especially trying to, if you're the hired musician, relay the uh, the vision of the artist and how to you know understand what they're saying. So communication is is one of the biggest key things, not only just from uh, you know if you're touring together, you know, it's, and you're all in close quarters and mm-hmm. how to be courteous to each other and talk to each other and when not to talk to each other, mm-hmm. but also communicating with the artist, the musical director, the band leader, what have you, not when they come to you and being able to translate what they're saying, hey, we need this out of you and asking the right questions. Oh, do you mean this and whatever and how that works? So developing that, that people skill, if you will. Mm. Um, being self-reliant, self-resourceful is another one, obviously mm-hmm. being organized, you yes. Know, these all these things, uh, you know, when they're said out loud, 
like I said, sound very common sense. And people go, well, duh, of course. And but, I don't, I don't. Sorry to interrupt, but I, I just don't think that they're they're even said out loud enough. In uh, on you know, I listen to podcasts and and watch podcasts on on YouTube and everything. And you have these business uh, music business professionals doing all these these podcasts about the music business, and I don't think that things just like the very simple, obvious idea of being organized that's a mm. that is an enormous deal in anyone's life as an adult, but sure. especially as a musician. Right. Well, there's this whole thing, too, where I think, uh, and, and I'm sure you've dealt with it, too, and many people will run across this if they're involved in this business in any way, shape, or form, that there's so many people that forget that the same business etiquette you would have in any other professional situation applies to our business. One million you know, percent. One million percent. And I think it's very easy because, you know, hey, it's rock and roll, woohoo, we're here ha- yeah. to have a good, which is, it's fun, it is. But... We forget that we do have to take this seriously. We do have to take our craft seriously. We have to be professionals. We have to set a tone, set an example. That all those things that uh, it's very easy because this is an this is an art form. This is the arts field. Right. It's like running away with the circus kind of thing. Well, I'm sure you talk to any professional circus folk, they'll tell you the same thing. Yeah. Like, well, you ran away with the circus. Like, yeah, but I still have to. You know, hey, if you're in the trapeze act, I still got to be professional to catch my partner. Otherwise, they're dead. You know? <laughs> right. So, right. you know, they, you know, those professionals realize that this is a profession and we have to be professional. And I think that's something. Well, and also, you know, getting into the music uh, of any kind, people tend to show an interest in that thing very young. You know, yeah. so, I mean, you know, you can imagine what was the first time say, I want to do this for a living. You're, you know, five, six, seven years old. Mm-hmm. So those things we can't wrap our heads around at that age right you know we can wrap our heads around being on stage and playing rock star right but everything else there's we you know you don't get it and and none of us do i mean you don't learn 100 percent until you do definitely you know definitely and uh the one thing also that uh, a, a good uh piece of advice that i've been given and i've benefited from is you know finding mentors yeah. Uh, in this business, in, in all facets, again, from, you know, the music business side to the performance side, to the touring side, to the writing side, everything. Because there, uh, uh, again, one of the things of being fortunate in Nashville is that we've got everybody from all levels and from all different genres that are there. That even though I've been doing this a, a good long time, I still have people that I look up to. Uh, that or ahead of me that I still learn every day mm-hmm. and it's important to have those people in your life even as an adult as an experienced professional so I can you know we talked about Troy earlier he's a great resource because I, I mean we're friends enough that I can pick his brain about anything yeah and, you know, and I can only imagine to... you know the experience oh my uh, gosh yeah. that he has you know playing um, how long has Tesla been around 30 years wow. maybe more more than 30 years but yeah. you know they've but they've done it all from the ground level all the way up to selling out multiple nights in arenas 25 million records sold i think and wow you know it's yeah and it's a great resource because he uh takes it seriously obviously he's a professional and right. and they've survived they take it seriously but you know even those things you might have a curiosity that even though you haven't experienced that level of success at a younger age you still want to ask somebody about it maybe get some heads up because then you're ready if and when that happens to you yeah you're better equipped to handle it so that way you don't you know find yourself face down overdosed somewhere or you don't get taken advantage in a business situation mm-hmm. you know or you which, don't blow an opportunity because exactly you don't blow your yep. money you don't yep. do any of that stuff mm-hmm. well this is exactly why i have people like you on here so that um you know it's kind of like a mentorship from afar you know i I, and for myself you know i'm i'm having a blast doing these because i know what i know but Mm -hmm. i'm always always learning trying to learn and to be able to reach out to people like yourself and learn i'm learning from from you as hopefully 
everyone that's going to watch and listen to this will learn too. So, um, yeah, these these kinds of resources I think are invaluable. And then of course having real life humans that you can you can call up. You know, like um, we met through Rich Redmond. Oh yeah. You know, yeah. Um, and I was I met Rich before I even moved to Nashville. Um, it must have been definitely over 10 years ago so like maybe 12 years ago mm-hmm. and you know we be, we became friends but i also at the same time without even calling him and and asking him things i consider him a, consider and still do consider him a mentor by watching his career and watching what he does and mm-hmm. i actually i actually i modeled my anti bully tour after his um his um his speaking tours that he oh, does. Oh, sure. Yeah. Sure. So, yeah, definitely having people that have been there, done that, or are actively doing it are, are just the perfect kind of role models to have and mentors. So mm-hmm. I, I think that's great advice for, for people. Right. And this is something I think that is applicable to anybody at any stage in their career because you can always learn something. Definitely. Um, I mean, Rich is a good example because obviously Rich has a musical career that he's successful at, but he has all these other cottage industry type things like his, his speaking tour yes. and how he translates his musical skill into that. So there's always something else to learn there, you know, from a business standpoint. He's right. got a whole different, and it's the way he approaches his business is different from this other guy or whoever else. And they're not, nobody's more successful than the other. It's just a different approach. And we're all products of our influences and what we've learned, you know, and that definitely applies. We can easily trace those lines musically, stylistically, how, you know, with you, it's like how you might approach writing a song. Right. And you say, oh, that's a little bit of this and a little bit of that, but that's who we are. Mm-hmm. And the same thing I think is applicable in a business standpoint, too. You know, Rich is a great example of that. Yeah. On a, on a totally different note, um, mm-hmm. when, especially when I listen to my own, the last record, I absolutely, mm-hmm. if anybody's listening to this, for a plug for myself, go check out um, my last record, Shake, Rattle, and Roll. I mean, you just totally crushed it. And there are two bass lines that are absolutely amazing to me. I mean, mm-hmm. the whole thing is great, but um, that stand out. There's one in The Bridge of McConaughey, a song that I wrote. And then oh. in the title track, uh, Shake, Rattle, and Roll, the bass line is, is the intro and the outro, I believe, and goes throughout the whole the whole song, but it's super, super sweet, so I just want to thank you for that. Um, oh, thank you. Yeah, so so how, maybe, maybe you can tell everyone, you know, how you got to Nashville, and maybe like, what you consider one of your, one of your breaks, one of your big uh, breaks. That's a good question. Uh, well, what, the way I initially got to Nashville first was a buddy of mine I went to college with at Berkeley, uh, a gentleman by the name of Chris Yeoman, who's a drummer, and uh, he initially inspired me to look into Nashville. Uh, I was I had just graduated Berkeley, and I was still living in Boston and working there, and I was playing out here and there with some people, um, but I was kind of feeling like I was hitting a glass ceiling, or hitting a ceiling, not a mm-hmm. glass ceiling, just a ceiling, and... Uh, uh, my buddy Chris had come over to my apartment and was actually looking to sell his furniture to me because he was moving to Nashville. Mm. And he came over and like within 10 minutes, he's like, you were talking about wanting to be a studio musician. You might want to look into Nashville. So literally in within a very short conversation, I was before I knew it, I was seriously considering move to Nashville. Uh, and obviously I looked into it and very shortly decided to go ahead and do it because I felt like, okay, if I need to, make a move, I need to make a move. Uh, as uh, we talked about Rich earlier, as Rich likes to say, you know, you got to be in it to win it. Yeah, uh, burn the boats, right. it, burn the boats. Exactly, exactly. So we, uh, I did look into L.A. because I had friends in L.A. and I kind of, I was fascinated about getting into playing on film scores. I've always yep. been fascinated. I, and I've done that since then a couple times, but uh, but it appealed to me. So uh, I made the move to Nashville and I had a couple buddies of mine there uh, already living there. So, from so LA wasn't just, you didn't, you weren't feeling it as far as I wasn't the city. Feeling it. Yeah. I wasn't feeling the city. I felt like for whatever reason, and, and obviously this is still applicable, even though, uh, Nashville is growing in leaps and bounds. 
it's still a, a very far livable city the way I wanted to live, more so than L.A. Gotcha. And that's not nothing against L.A. I love yeah. L.A. I go there. I always have a great time. And I, like I said, some of my best friends live out there and work there. And, you know, it's, it's, it's always a good time. But I think just for my own personal taste of lifestyle, Nashville is a little more conducive for yeah. what I want. Which is important. Uh, which is very important very because, important. you know, it, it's kind of one of those things where at the end of the day, you go, you work, whatever they may be, but you still got to come home to something. Right. And what do you want to come home to? You know, yeah. that's and it's and it's your call to do that. Mm-hmm. So I made that call and I'm glad because Nashville being a lot uh, was a lot more broad based than I expected it to be. When I first went there, I figured it's all going to be country music. But right. yeah, it I is start- so not. It is so not. And even then, when I moved there twenty, when I moved to Nashville twenty years ago, um, it was not as broad based as it is today. But there mm-hmm. definitely was a, um, uh, a a bigger picture than most people thought it was, especially people who don't live there. Yeah, because I had so many people say, "Oh, Nashville, you know, you're, you know, it's all country." I'm like, "No, nah, not really. Uh, there's a lot of it, and it made Nashville. I'll I'll definitely say that. But there's a lot more to it than that." So that was the reason why I made the move to Nashville. Um, and then it didn't take long. It's one of those things where if you know one person, you just go out and it, it playing the patience game, you start to meet people as you go along, you know, and this person leads to this person, whatever, and you become part of the community. And subsequently that translates into getting calls for work, yep. which is what kind of happened with me. So, I mean, my first, um, I don't know if there's necessarily first big break, my first break um, there's a bass player by the name of Tommy McDonald, Tommy Mack, who, who he plays with Jeffrey Steele a lot. So when Jeffrey yep. Steele, the songwriter, plays live, Tommy's his bass player. Nice. Um, and uh, I met Tommy 48 hours after I got to town. Oh, wow. uh, he was playing with uh, a local act called Laura Darling and the Hurricanes. Uh, and Laura's uh, songwriting partner is Jess Leary, who's the number one songwriter. And they're playing live, and I just got introduced to him because, hey, bass player, bass player, blah, blah, blah. And we hit it off, and he just, after a few minutes, goes like, you looking for a gig? I'm like, well, yeah, of course. I just <laughs> got here. I need to, yeah. He's like, you want this one? I'm like, really? Uh, sure. He literally points to the stage. He's like, well, I'm going out with David Lee Murphy, who, oh, nice. who's, the, you know, again, another big songwriter artist. Yep. Yep. And he's like, she's, you know, Laura's got some in-town dates, and I, I can't do it. I'll just tell her that you're available and, you know. And sure enough, Boom. I started playing with Laura. So that was my first break. Uh, <laughs> so, so your first, how, how long was that into it? Uh, into 48 it? hours. Oh, jeez. <laughs> wow. I, I got really lucky in that sense. Um, I mean, I didn't start playing with Laura for another several weeks after that, but the, at least the ball started rolling right away. Yeah. And uh, from there, I met other players that were in her band, and then that translated into other work, and it literally just kind of, you know, you kind of connect the dots. And Did you do Broadway at all, or? I didn't actually. Oh. Uh, I didn't. Um, I, part of that was intentional, but not really a hundred percent. It's not like I said, "Oh, I'm not going to do Lower Broadway and that whole cover scene." I just kind of was able to do other things. Yeah, um, I mean, it's worked. It works for some people. Uh, sure. Gary Janneman, I think his last name is. With, oh yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, he back when I was in Nashville, he was on 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 one of my gigs. I think that. We had to find a sub for him, though. But um, and Dean Merrill, uh, oh yeah, good friend of mine. Uh, he's a bass player, and he had put the band together because I was doing one of my only handful of gigs I've ever done on Broadway, and uh, and Gary was was playing on on Broadway. And the next thing you know, he's he's with Tyler Farr. Yeah, that's the way it works, and um, especially Lower Broadway. Like uh, some people might poo-poo Lower Broadway because it's a cover gig. Yeah. You know, it's like, well, you should be playing with original songs. Well, you should. Well, how about do both? You know, um, right. <laughs> but Lower Broadway has definitely benefited a lot of people, and not just where I know guys there that you know play regularly and that's their gig, but you know it kind of feeds out to some gigs. Um, I I don't see it as often. Uh, probably because I just haven't kept up with it as much, but uh, definitely when I got to town, it was definitely the feeder for for bands, you know. Yeah. Um, oh, I used to play with this guy on Lower Broadway, and now we're playing with said artist or whatever. And, yeah, and that's because great. there's so. there's definitely two worlds in Nashville. That is the music business. We'll just call it that. Music row, music sure. business stuff, and then there's Lower Broadway, and you know that they. they 
cross over a little bit, but not as much as people would imagine, I guess. Right. There is, and, and that's, uh, you know, that's true. Some of those things don't cross over, but it's not to say that they don't. Right. Um, they never they, there's like definitely that instances of that. I think just kind of there is a perception that they don't a lot. And yeah. a lot of times they don't. You're right. Yeah. But uh, but it depends. Yeah. It really does. And it's one of those things where, you know, if you're a newer person coming to a town like Nashville, but and I speak to her as Nashville because that's my experience and that's what I know. But, uh, you know, it's just uh, being patient. Mm-hmm. And it's not uh, necessarily, obviously, you can be a, a phenomenal musician, songwriter, artist, whatever it may be, but it it's going to take a while just because people don't know you exist. Right. You know, and it just, you know, it just takes a, a, a time, you know, because it's, I know a lot of people go out and network, you know, mm-hmm. using that term networking or whatever. Well, uh, I feel like Nashville is one of those things where networking can take the role of being more casual, not like I'm going to yeah. go purposely to this club and hand out my business card or something yeah. of that thing. You can just go and hang out and talk to people, and then eventually the conversations leads to, oh, you're a player too. Oh, you write. You want to try writing sometime? You know, yeah. Sometimes I, it, it's very organic. Sometimes, yeah. I think that's a that's a great point too. Um, I was going to ask if you had advice for people that were, you know, maybe moving to Nashville or uh, and trying to, you know, become a a musician, um, studio road musician. But that's one thing that there's really kind of an art to networking. And that's another skill that you kind of have to hone as you go, because I know at the beginning, you know, people can be too too aggressive with their networking. Mm -hmm. And yes. I'm definitely guilty of that at the beginning. Um, always trying to work on it, you know, really trying to work on exactly what you were saying. Um, in most cases, it's just kind of a, a, a hangout and and uh, meet people that you might be end up being friends with and not shoving a CD in their face. Right, exactly. It's one of those things where uh, there is an art form to it. Uh, I always felt like sometimes I'm not the best at either, but honestly, I can't think of anybody who's the best at it. There's yeah. there's people that are maybe good about it, but really what's worked for me, which that's the other thing too, it's that everybody's path is drastically different. Definitely. I've, I've heard people say that term before, especially early on in my career, but I've experienced it firsthand. Go, I am here to tell you, yeah, everybody's path is drastically different. Yeah. So the best thing to do is not to stress out about it too much. Be patient, really mm-hmm. the key thing, because if, if you move, I've seen so many people move to town, and if they don't have a gig in four months, they move away. Yep. And I'm like, dude, ain't nobody going to have a gig in four months. I mean, right. sure, there's exceptions to the rule. Some people are very fortunate, but mm-hmm. even those guys go like, man, I'm just dumb lucky. That yep. I got that. yep. And nothing to do with my skill set. Yep. So it, it's it's really being patient and, and getting out there and being kind of community-minded, like go... Go see some shows, go hang people, but you know, don't make it a point. It's like, okay, I'm going out to go network. Just kind of go see, like, let me go check out and see what's going on. Right. What I like to do yep. is, you know, yeah. uh, when I'm when I'm not on the road and I get back to town, I go and see my friends play. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah. Go go support my friends. You know, at, at their you know in town shows, and and you just end up meeting people. Well, and that's the thing, because like you just said it best, it's like you're there to you know support a friend. Really, that's your primary goal. But then the after effect is you probably wind up meeting somebody. Right. You know, some days you won't. You'll go to a show, and that'll be that. And other days are like, oh man, I'm glad I went. I met so and so. Yeah. Who, who, you know, I might get to co-write with. Right. You know, and it might not be the best thing in the slice bread, but hey, it's an opportunity. Let's give it a whirl. It might be fun. Yep. At worst, it'll be fun. Yeah, you know exactly. And you know, you God get to go forbid in, we have fun in our business. I know. You know? And then you get to go <laughs> and you know watch your you know support your friends. That's that is the number one thing about Nashville, in my opinion, are the people, um, and just kind of the the sense of community. I just don't. I've never experienced it with a music community like it is in Nashville. You know. Um, mm. So any other so. If there's someone you know going to Berkeley and they're thinking about moving to Nashville, what any other advice that you would tell them to you know if they wanted to go and do it, what you, eventually go do what you are doing now? 
that what I said earlier probably the the first and foremost thing. Mm -hmm. But uh, another thing too is is definitely obviously keep up with your skill. Yep. You know, I'm I'm a big proponent of that, and a lot of people sometimes get wrapped up in the well. Sometimes other stuff is more important. Mm -hmm. You know, like they say, well, you know, your look or your networking skill or whatever might outweigh your playing style. Uh, there might be some truth to that in some cases to get your foot in the door, but I think uh, after that, in order to keep said gig, if it's a live gig, or to keep getting callbacks for session work, yep. you definitely have to have the skills so you got to deliver still. Yeah. Like, yeah, you're a nice guy. I really dig hanging with you. I dig playing with you, but you got to deliver night after right. night. You gotta, it's got to be top-notch. Which, per which perfectly goes back to what you were saying about Troy, from Tesla, uh, still constantly, you know, learning and practicing and and getting better and better. And so, what I wanted to end with was, if you could just tell us a little bit more about your uh, rock project with him, because I'm a mm -hmm. I'm a rock and roll freak, so I cool. love it. I want to hear what you guys are doing. Absolutely, man. Uh, uh, right now, it's uh, it, again, it's called Dixie Horsepower. Uh, there's a Facebook page. We're on Spotify. We put the EP out finally. We kind of uh, the the good and the bad thing of having a batch of guys who do this for a living outside of this is our little fun thing, if you will. We're yeah. not, you know, we definitely kind of like, you know, it's not for making the money. We're definitely having fun doing it. It's hard to get our schedules together because Troy's still out mm -hmm. with Tesla. I'll be doing a million different things. Uh, Kevin Lawson, our lead singer and, and our primary lyric writer, he's, he's really talented. The guy's an Atlanta guy mm -hmm. who used to work with uh, Butch Walker and, and oh, a lot of those cats. I yeah, love I know Butch I love Walker. Butch. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> Butch is awesome. <laughs> um, you know, and uh, we basically have to juggle our schedules. So it's kind of all right. Hey guys, we got a weekend we can get together. Maybe hash out something new, or maybe can we get a gig on the books? We I think we've played maybe four or five gigs total in our entire career. We've had the band together for a few years. It's just mm -hmm. you know, but we're not stressing it. Um, but again, band's name is Dixie Horsepower. Uh, we're on Spotify. There's an EP recorded a few years ago. It's finally out there. Um, got a Facebook page. Uh, heck, we got T-shirts. Awesome. So, you know, we got right. we got something. We got we got CDs and T-shirts. So there you go. There's the important things. Uh, <laughs> yes. But uh, but yeah, check it out. It's um it's it's just as it's just as basic rock and roll as you can get. Uh, cool. There are some kind of southern rock elements. I think we almost purposely stuck that in, going like, well, we kind of base ourselves out of Nashville. Maybe give it a little southern twang. Yeah. And we did a little bit, but it wasn't forced, which was good. It just kind of. That's when people ask me, "Is like, well, is it Southern rock? Is it this rock? I'm like, eh, it's just rock, yeah. you know? Yeah. And you interpret it any way you want, you know, take it for what it is. But, uh, but it's a lot of fun and, uh, and getting to play with those guys. We also have um, uh, Garv Bali is playing guitar. Garv's an old friend of mine from New York, guitar player from the band Eve to Adam, mm -hmm. which uh, I worked with and we were on uh, Sony uh, a number of years ago. And uh, at least scored a top 20 hit on Billboard. So at least, you know, there's a notch there. But that was a fun band we did for a while. And uh, Garv now lives in Nashville. There's another thing of like, he moved to Nashville a few years ago. And he was asking me, he's like, hey, man, I want to be a side guy too. What should I do? And I told mm -hmm. him, I said, dude, just be patient. It'll be fine. And now he's, he's playing with, uh, he just started with an artist. And I feel bad. I should know the name of the artist. But they're out touring. Mm -hmm. He does a few dates with Josh Grayson. He's kind of mm -hmm. working his way in. A little bit so you know again patience and he's slowly getting his way up there too but garv also will play lead guitar with uh dixie horsepower dixie you know, horsepower well. so nice great uh, name everybody check it yeah. out yeah man if we can get a sponsorship with some sort of motor company it'd be awesome <laughs> yes yes definitely one in the south absolutely well cool well thank you so very much um I'm sure that everybody's going to appreciate your insights. Um, I know I do. Um, so I really appreciate you taking your time while you're on tour to, uh, to talk to us and remind everybody to go and check out Dixie Horsepower, right? Absolutely, yeah. Um, and, check you uh, out on tour with, with Trace Adkins. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Come have a good time with that because that's one of those things where uh, country icon guy, but even if you don't know much about Trace and you think he's all just cowboy hat country, come to a show and you'll see differently because obviously trace like a lot of artists in any genre their palette is not just one style he likes a lot of different things mm -hmm. and some of those things do get injected into the show too 
Oh, cool. So, which Fun. is which is very nice to do. It, it makes it uh, uh, a good music show, not just a good country music show. Nice, in my opinion. Nice. So there's that, but uh, yeah. And uh, come check me out on all the social medias too. Um, I'm all out there: Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, Facebook, yada yada yada. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Excellent. Yeah, we'll have um, in the description. We'll have your name spelled properly and um now, everybody, now every, everyone will know how to pronounce it properly uh gotcha. from the beginning of this which will be perfect so cool um thanks again for being on the sharon zone remind everybody to uh subscribe on itunes and on youtube it's all for free for uh anybody who wants to learn more about the music business so thanks again man i appreciate it man tim thank you so much it was a pleasure hope to see you again soon you got it